This video is going to show how you can do simple simulations using Excel's random number generator. If you've never used a random number generator, then you uh, might want to check out my um, pair of short videos that introduce you to this tool. So here we have a probability problem. Uh, it's part of a game. Suppose players draw coins with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 printed on them. And then we have a table showing the probability of receiving each numbered coin. So, for instance, the probability of the coin having number 1 on it is 0.2. The probability that it has a 5 on it is 0.5. And all these probabilities have to add up to 1. This is known as a discrete probability table. Then our game is we're going to have a player draw two coins and we're going to estimate the probability that the sum of the numbers on the coins is less than or equal to 8. Notice if you draw coins, the lowest the sum would be would be 2 because you could have a 1 on the first coin and a 1 on the second. The largest you could get would be a 10, which would be a 5 on the first coin and a 5 on the second coin. So let's see how this works. The first thing we have to do when we have a discrete probability problem is to set up a discrete probability table. Such a table always has, first off, a row listing the outcomes, which, as I said, imagine the coin has a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 listed on it. And then the next column needs to list the probabilities associated with those, which would be the point 2, the point 1s, and finally the point 5. Okay, this needs to be done, as I said, first. Now, we can use the random number generator to generate a large number of what we call random variables. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to grab the random number generator, go to data. This requires that you've installed the add-in, data analysis, and then moving through the drop-down window, we want to pick out random number generation. Okay. Now, number of variables, uh, essentially, uh, it's going to correspond to how many columns of random numbers we want to generate. And uh, you kind of have to pick this out from the problem. If I were just picking one coin out, one column would do. But since I want to pull out two coins, it'll be handy to have two columns of output. Number of random numbers, this is just how many rows we're going to do. Now with simulation, uh, it helps to have a very large number. Now because uh, simulations with really large numbers can be somewhat slow, for this demonstration, I'm going to pick a 1,000. And then you have a uh, drop-down which has a number of distributions. As I said, this is known here as a discrete probability table, so I'll click on discrete, and now here's a neat thing. You can enter this table here in this box by just selecting it. However, when you do that, don't select the uh, labels, just select numerical values like that, and they do have to be numerical. Uh, next, for my output range, um, I'll just keep it on the same page, and I'll just have it start, say, right over here in, uh, in column K. All right now, let's see what we get. Okay, now we have two rows. Now, here's how to interpret this. Basically, in column K, we have the outcut, out, um, outcome for our first coin. So notice we're picking coins, remember numbered 1 through 5. Notice 5 has the largest probability, so we should see a, a lot of 5s here. 
roughly half of them, 0.5. And yeah, we do see a lot of fives there. We see the other numbers occurring on occasion. And then with the let column M represent the second coin, you know, and similarly, we do see quite a few fives there. But some ones, twos, threes, and fours. Okay, so like the first row here would be, okay, we drew one coin, which is a five, and we drew another coin, which is a five. The second row would be, we drew a coin with a two on it, and then a coin with a three on it. So we've done the, kind of the, the setup for this problem, just a random variable generation. And now we have to look at the probability we want to answer to see what else might be necessary. All right, we have uh, here, suppose a player draws two coins. Oh, great. Okay, great. We did that. Estimate the probability that the sum of the numbers is less than or equal to 8. Well, for this problem, it means that it really would be handy to calculate a column with the sums. So I'll do an equal here. And to do a sum, I'm just going to click. I'm going to click on the first one. Do a plus sign from the keypad and click on the second one. And, you know, of course, just check to make sure it's correct. 5 plus 5 is 10. And uh, notice that won't fall in what we're looking for, right? Because we want to just figure out uh, the probability by focusing on sums that are less than or equal to 8. So that wouldn't be. But notice the next one, 2 plus 3, which would be 5, that would be good. That's less than or equal to 8. Well, what you can do is put your cursor on this 10, and double click on this uh, lower right hand little dot there, double click on it, and it'll fill in all those sums for you. So the third column there is really the one that is going to be handy to us because that contains these sums. So how do we get our probability? Well, there are a thousand numbers here, because remember that's what we generated. So there are a thousand numbers, and we could laboriously go through here and just count all the ones that were less than or equal to 8. Not very efficient, right? Like the 5 would be, the 8 would be, the 7 would be. Well, of course, we want Excel to do that work for us. So what we're going to reach for is a very nice... Um, function called count if. So start typing out count if. Stop when you see it appear in the drop down box. Uh, there's a count if and a count ifs. For this one, just count if. Now, so here's the deal. Notice it says range and criteria. The range will be all these numbers in column M. Uh, easy way to do it. It, you know, rather than like starting and dragging down, you know, you have to drag down a long way, just click on the actual title there at the top. Click the, the little block here that has M in it. Notice the format, it will do M colon M. And that will select all of them for you. Now do a comma. And now we put in the criteria or criterion that we want. Now here's how we get that. Notice that this says we want the sum to be less than or equal to 8. So let me come in here. Sorry, I know it just did a zero here. I'll go back and fix that in a minute. Our criteria is this. It's criterion, I mean. It is the sum is less than or equal to 8. So go back into this box here where we have that count if. So after the comma, here's what you do. You use a quotation mark when you start typing this statement. Now you don't type the word sum. All you have to do is the less than or equal to 8. So inside of there in the formula bar, less than or equal to 8 in quotation marks. Okay? So again, looking at that formula, count if this is where we look, and what we look for is anything which is less than or equal to 8. So if we hit enter on that, 
we'll get how many are. Hmm. Okay. We've got uh, 649 of them are less than or equal to 8. Okay. Um, now, if you just did this on your own computer, you're not going to get exactly 649 because you see when you created your random numbers, they were, they were random. They're not going to be exactly the same as mine. But you probably don't get anything that's ridiculously far from that. You know, hopefully you're maybe 10 or 20 above or below that number. But simulation is not exact. Okay? Now, let's go back on the 649. We'd like to turn this into a probability. The way we'd do that is we'd have to divide it by the number of um, essentially rows here of data. Now we know it's a thousand and we could just come up here and divide by a thousand but you won't always know how many things are in a column so an easier thing to do is to use something like the count function, count if function. It is simply count. And if you select count then you can go back and uh, click on the top of it M, M again so it shows up as M colon M and that will divide this by the 1,000. So it gives us a probability there of 0.649 for this problem. Okay, let's have a look at another problem. Have here, suppose that the numbers, number of calls to a call center they follow a Poisson distribution with a mean of five calls per minute. Poisson is a statistical distribution which is often used to model arrivals to some process like people walking into a bank, cars arriving at a stoplight, or in this case calls arriving to a call center. So what we want to do is generate some Poisson uh, random variables. And we'll do that in the following way. Um, I'm going to put a header on this. So I want to have a Poisson distribution. And with the Poisson distribution, we say that that mean of five calls per minute, we call that the parameter of the distribution. And we normally like we'll write out the word Poisson with five in parentheses. So now I'll show you how to generate some values. So let's again go to data, data analysis, random number generation. Um, I'm only going to need one column here. I'll leave it at a thousand so we'll get a nice long list of a thousand values. And from the drop down you'll find the, the Poisson there. And lambda, that's simply that parameter there in the parentheses, that is your five. Only other thing we have to do is just put it uh, in a good spot. Uh, I guess we want to put it here in row two of column I. And I'll click OK there. And have a look at these values. Now as you do that, uh, notice that most of the values are somewhere close to the value 5 or, or less than it. 5, 2, 3, 3, I have 5, 5. This is a bit bigger. You probably see similar sort of thing on yours, but we do occasionally get things that are significantly higher than 5, like a 10 I've got. You might even have something larger than that uh, in your list. You know, that's kind of realistic, uh, realistic of a real-world situation. If you were done, like, maybe a front desk somewhere or worked in a fast food restaurant, you know, you may average so many customers per hour, but there are just crazy hours where it's like, what happened? And the Poisson helps model that. Um, the idea is you won't have a lot of crazy hours, because if you did, the mean would be pulled up. But you will get some that are significantly beyond the mean. Now let's estimate the probabilities listed here in part A and part B. So for part A, I want the probability, I'll just use P for probability. We want the probability that our number of calls, I'll, I'll write X like we would in algebra, we want five or fewer calls. So that's basically saying that you would want X to be less than or equal to five. 
And now let's do that using Excel. So we're going to use, again, the count if function. So I'll pull up count if. And I'm just going to look here for the, for the range at column I. So click on the I at the top. It shows up just like before. It's like I colon I. It's just saying everything in I. That is a number. Uh, so what's nice to know is I, I decided this time to put a label on it, the, the row one Poisson. That will get ignored. The count if will only look at these cells that are entirely just numerical. Now for our criterion, well we want x is less than or equal to 5. We don't need to type the x, so in quotation marks we'll just do less than or equal to 5 and the quotation marks and close it with the parentheses. If we do this, it'll tell us how many of these are 5 or fewer. And notice it's quite a few. It's 622 out of this whole list. But again, probability we'd want to divide by the total number so click back on that cell and finish it off by again counting the number of numerical rows in column I so just click at the top and now that I've added that there we go get a nice neat probability 0.622 and again hopefully the answer that you got wasn't drastically away from that. Now before I do point part B, part B, let me point out a realistic thing about simulation. In order to help um, get more accurate answers, you would either want to do a much larger number of trials, like instead of 1,000 to say 10,000, or perhaps to re repeat the simulation many times and then say average the answers you get by the law of large numbers uh, it suggests that you know essentially the more total trials you've done the more likely it is that your answer will approach the theoretically correct probability all right we'll do part b now to finish off this video so in part b let's do the probability uh, and what's it say there? Estimate the probability that exactly four calls will be received. So we'll say x is exactly four, x equals four. Well, this won't be very much different from part A. Now that we know to use the count if function, count if, select uh, our range, that column I, and now just for our criteria, do equals four. Make sure you have the equals four in quotation marks. Close off your parentheses at the end. And this time, I'm going to go and just also remember to divide by count so it will come up as a probability. So count all of column I. And that's what we get for this. Okay, I got about 0.182. Again, can't guarantee that that's exact. But perhaps, you know, if I had a room full of 30 people doing this, like I... I do in my face-to-face -face classes could take all 30 people and have them give me their answers average them and we're likely to there to get greater accuracy in this prediction okay I'll have a follow-up with a second video on this topic in the future